Uh, it was it was a little bit too much. We were like, okay, let's do something easy. We get move corresponding. Hey, <laughs> a little bit about new syntax. All right, okay. <laughs> that will be easy. <laughs> it's always to know that we are still developing plenty of stuff. Yeah, for the good. <laughs> And then it was like, whoa, wait, wait a second, what's going on? And it was like, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you also were like, uh, yeah, this is actually a session that, um, what was it? You, you are normally presenting it in a, a two hour session or something like that. And you condensed it down to uh, 45 minutes. And that was really, really uh, impressive. Yeah, but also, uh, I really liked actually your session because it, it was uh, easy, easy uh, to follow uh, because it was really. Uh, good structured actually, uh, the concatenations. And uh, some people actually asked the question, but uh, uh, <laughs> at least one of the questions I was still capable of to understand was like, uh, why is SAP still investing in, in stuff like move corresponding or doing it, uh, yeah, it not, uh, maybe Sören can jump in, uh, uh, use a, a different, a newer syntax. And it's the correspond, that we have the move corresponding statement and also the corresponding hashtag exactly. on the right hand side yeah, yeah. It's, i think it's technically the same but just it, it looks uh nicer well, or older depending the 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 modern way to write programs is now in a way more functional way yeah so if you create a constructor operator it has you can use it in a more functional programming style you may also uh, nest it and it has many other advantages. Yeah, uh, usually uh, when you perform complex uh, operations with tables, optimizing the code for us in the app site is much harder. But if there is a pattern of the common operations that you perform on a table or on a structure, uh, and you can identify that with a, with a new operation, we have many options to, or we have many possibilities in the kernel, in the virtual machine to do something much faster that, than anything else that you can get, yeah? On your own, usually. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting out in here. <laughs> <laughs> so we also have now Bogdan joining us again. Hi, everyone. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, tell us a little bit ab about yourself uh, in the uh, first place. Ah, okay. Yes. So uh, I am a, a software architect uh, responsible for background ABAP development uh, in our working in our uh, office, Capgemini office in Wrocław, yeah? That's uh, maybe more, more known to, 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 to our German colleagues as a Breslau, yeah? So that's uh, quite close to the border with Czech Republic and uh, with uh, Germany. So that's a convenient, lo that, that was the convenient location for all good times when we were traveling almost of the, on the weekly basis to the customers, which is not the case anymore. Yeah, but still the, the advantage is that uh, uh, we have quite close location to the beautiful giant mountains, yeah, when just the winter season has started, so you can go for ski touring, for example. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, but when, when it comes to the professional stuff, yeah, so I am more specialized in uh, uh, complex uh, ABAP frameworks, uh, uh, for both uh, types of projects like Brownfield or Greenfield. Of course, I prefer Greenfield because it is always better to build something and design something from scratch rather than, than inherit something big after another uh, company. But that, that's also 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 yeah. challenge and that, that's also interesting. And, I and I have to say, this is actually a pretty interesting uh, lineup of speakers. Currently, we have now here, for instance, Bogdan. Uh, it's more from the uh, Eastern Europe, so, so to say. Uh, and then we have uh, Marcos, which is actually from Spain, but moved to Germany, I learned uh, German. And we have Gopal, which is from the other side of the earth right now, <laughs> from yeah. Seattle, in, uh, living in, in, in Seattle. But from the accent, I, I would say he's actually not born in the USA. And uh, this is actually pretty impressive because uh, this also shows that uh, ABAP is also one of the, the languages, uh, like a language, a programming language, but like a, a natural language that actually allows people from all around the world uh, to come together 
and uh, it changes their life, actually. I mean, this is really impressive. Yeah? I mean, if you can speak, speak ABAP, actually, you can move to any place in the world where they need an ABAP in a developer. Exactly, yeah. and what I could add from my side is yeah, that ABAP is a so-called fourth generation language. Yeah, I don't know if you remember such uh, quite old terminology that was born in 90s, yeah? like fourth GL languages. Yeah. They were supposed to be more business-oriented languages like uh, ABAP. My previous technology was Progress, Yeah, that this is the American company which uh, uh, just invented a language named Progress which is from the, I would say, um, from the general perspective, quite close to ABAP. Yeah? So via a very small number of instructions, you are able to achieve much more compared to the third generation languages like Java, C++, yeah. and, and so on. Yeah. Yeah? So I think that this, despite some, some rumors that maybe ABAP is, is dead, I believe it is not, and it still will be <sighs> yeah, quite, quite successful, uh, successful uh, that's tool it. for us. <laughs> Since I started in SAP 10 years ago, and when I was in the university, it was again the same. Like, do not learn ABAP and Java. Everything is going to be replaced with Java in SAP, and it never happened. So I, I hope I can retire, and ABAP is still, uh, or oh, I'm looking forward to retire, and ABAP is still healthy. And, uh, uh -huh. and yeah, Java is almost dying. Everybody's doing JavaScript. <laughs> Every year, a new framework in JavaScript, like from React to Angular to Vue.js, and I don't know what's coming next. And ABAP is still ABAP. It, it evolves, it becomes yeah, but better and more comfortable with Bob I, and Rob, but it's still in the kernel, it's ABAP. Right, and, and I, I have worked on ABAP as well as many other programming languages. There is one very distinguishing factor of ABAP. If you want to be a good ABAPer, just ABAP knowledge is not sufficient. Like you have to first understand your business process. It forces you to understand the business process and like what you're trying to do with the program. It now becomes a super powerful tool once you know the business process to tackle it. It provides you with the framework to tackle those business process. In many other programming languages, if you observe, if you say take JavaScript, Java, etc., you are tackling a specific UI problem or things like that on that domain on a very laser focus. ABAP is much more... I mean, it forces you to think in a broader way as well as with modern about like 7.4 onwards, it has become, I don't know, like, you know, awesome. Uh, earlier, it used to be like 10 lines of code. Now you can do that same thing with just one line of code. It is, it is uh, and with Fury and combined with many other technologies together, it has become an awesome programming language. It's not, I wouldn't say it is dead at all. It's in fact, yeah. reborn and like, you know, uh, flourishing at this time. Well, I, I, I can assure you the last thing actually that's going to die is uh, ABAP for a simple reason. Even when a company actually is dying, uh, it's, it's going bankrupt or something like that. The last system to be turned off is actually the FI system. Yeah, And that normally means it, it's an SAP system. So the last thing that will still stay around when everybody else was already <laughs> fired will be the FI system. They will still need someone actually to turn it down and that will be an ABAP developer or the basis guy. So <laughs> ABAP is, is the last thing to die at the company. And uh, but, but I have to really, really uh, say what, what Kubel is saying, what I was saying is totally correct. Yeah, I, I once wrote a blog post about this that uh, ABAP people, it's not just enough to learn so it's the syntax. You have to understand actually the business problem, the business process. And this is really what, what differentiates any ABAP developer from a normal developer. Uh, in, in the good old days, subway development, repo, this was full stack development. So they were full stack developers before they actually was full stack developer terminus. So this only gives, gives a good uh, idea of the importance of, uh, of ABAP in, in general. And uh, but what question I still have for Gopal is uh, actually uh, did the framework you presented, yeah? I mean, um, what was actually the resistance uh, from the developers to adopt it and use it? Because normally it's like, hey, we have a cool framework and developers are like, well, no, I have a better idea. <laughs> actually, this, this, this whole thought process was born out of our internal problem. 
So we, uh, uh, as you know, Microsoft has been using SAP for a very long time and has been strong partners with SAP from 1990s onwards, right? Uh, so uh, uh, 19, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, yeah. So so about about 20 years, uh, Microsoft has been strongly using SAP, and so there is a lot of these uh, old. Uh, code in many of our user exit points, which make it very, very complex for us, for the developers. I mean, developers' life has been like really very difficult when one changes other and things like that. So this was a framework born out of that need for more agility and like, you know, more developer peacefulness, if you will. So there were, there was initial uh, discussion about like, you know, how it is all going to work and where, how, I mean, to, to grab the the idea of okay, this is possible, and dynamically we can go grab the memory and get this done, and like you know, determine the filter and all those. But once that clicked, everybody was everybody was on board, excited, and and in in fact, like you know, eager to implement it. We are driving the implementation internally as well. Yeah. And then uh, one question for Marcos actually. Um, so you, you said yeah, ten years ago you were still at university, and then you. Uh, decided to, to learn ABAP and you went to the ABAP core language, which I think is pretty crazy, but explains a lot looking at your talk. <laughs> no, I started 10 years ago in SAP, but uh, 20 years ago when I started at the university, the people were already saying, no, uh, ABAP is dead, uh, Java is the new thing and whatever. And I have been hearing that since, I don't know, the last 20 years. Yeah. But I but think that ABAP has a huge advantage that, that almost no other language has, which is the backwards compatibility. Somebody may come to us with a program which is 30 years old and we use a brand new compiler and everything works. Or at least there is a migration path which uh, offers them uh, some kind of uh, easy way to migrate the things, yeah? Which other operating language or which other framework uh, offers the very same migration or backwards compatibility options. I, I haven't heard of any. With all those new web frameworks, every three months, there is a completely new technology which you have to learn. And sometimes you rely on many open source components, but sometimes they are just maintained by one single person. And I don't know, I think it's uh, sometimes people associate ABAP with something old, but I think that the uh, with all those new features that we have built into the language, and especially with this uh, uh, RESTful ABAP programming that we are offering uh, something very innovative and which may be useful for long-term also. I actually have a wish list for, uh, or, a, or one primary wish for ABAP programming language. You know? I think uh, everybody uh, has this wish list. <laughs> <laughs> you probably know Tell that. Yours. Well, Pick a number. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, for, for writing an, or running an ABAP program, you need a SAP system right now, correct? Yeah. Like, you know, that's because the runtime is kind of integrated into SAP application server, which by itself is a huge, huge thing to kind of install and things like that. Uh, but if you look at an EXE or a C sharp program, etc., those are many or many of them you can you can run standalone because the runtime for it is standalone. So mm -hmm. if there is an ABAP standalone runtime, right, which can then execute dot ABAP ABAP programs from ABAP Git or whatever, then all of a sudden we have the ability to kind of syntax check things and like you know uh, uh, you know do code quality and uh, run uh, sample programs those kind of things in CI CD. I'm 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 going like way over, but you get you get my vibe right. Like you know there is yeah, a lot of yeah, possibility if there is a, a every, standard. I think that every single about, new colleague in the department <laughs> says, well maybe we can do it independent and we have an ABAP uh, virtual machine or compiler which runs on the command line without dependencies. <laughs> The real life is sometimes way more difficult than that. Uh, I think that the uh, moving so fast in the cloud, there will be a time where, where it doesn't matter how the compiler really runs. You will have just your, your web development interface or your Eclipse, and you will run your program checks again the, against the cloud or the application server in the cloud, and compilers won't be what they are anymore, at least from the user point of view. Yeah. yeah. But we actually have uh, later on in channel two, Lars uh, Van Peterson that is going to present some microservices stuff. And I think he is pretty uh, fast ahead in, in our time. And 
regarding running uh, ABAP code in JavaScript or something like that. So maybe one day. That transplant. Uh, are you talking about Lars? Uh, uh, Lars and his transpl transpiler to yeah. JavaScript from ABAP. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, let's 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 see what one time at one, at one day SAP is going to deliver. I would like to have a REPL interface for ABAP code where you can just paste in your code, but it's it's not it's not so easy or provide uh, everything with mock data. Yeah. So just uh, before we go to the lunch break, um, lunch break once again, uh, and the evening break. Um, <laughs> Some last famous words from uh, for your side, Gobal, Marcos, Bogdan. Do we want? So I, I I would like to say that that I think that 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 was very good initiative. Yeah, that uh, as as I said during those uh, coronavirus times, with all these limitations, we could uh, meet each other, talk, you know, even have have a fun together. Yeah. So of course the. The, the the essential subject they are important but it's also to me equally important to uh, to, to to meet people yeah online yeah and yeah. and to see that that let's say life is still ongoing despite those all all the limits yeah so i really appreciate this yeah. thank you I, I i agree i echo that uh, it's it's uh, when i first heard about abab abab conf in twitter I was like, what is, what is this? Uh, and then it's a yet another new conference. And then, then when, when I got to the web page, it dawned on me that there is, this is that, you know, you crave for that corner, right? Like, you know, developers corner. It's like, you know, for a developer, it's a dream come true. Like, you know, all the developers coming together and like, you know, brainstorming and having fun and things like that. This is absolutely amazing. And I hope that this is just the beginning as opposed to like, you know, one time deal, rather it is a beginning of a year or multi, once or twice or thrice a year kind of uh, thing where like developers have the ability to come together, like, you know, share our collective knowledge and like, you know, talk to each other and things like that. It, it bonds the community much more. Awesome initiative and uh, really good work on that. Uh, thank you very much for this, uh, for this forum. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to agree with my colleagues. I think it was great to have some kind of event, even with it when it's uh, remote, to go back to some kind of business unusual. And I would want to thank the organizers for that. It was my first year at ABAPConf, but it was a great experience, despite it was very fast, everything that I was telling in the end. So if uh, next year somebody has any wishes or like I want to see table comprehensions or meshes or whatever, just drop me an email or a message in the development network and we will see yeah. what we can prepare for next year. Uh, perfect. But if you go, go back to your uh, language group and you meet a host, uh, please uh, tell him, hey, he missed something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so now actually officially we now have a 20 minutes break, 15 minutes break more or less, where you can go cap a coffee. For everybody else, actually, we now have a special guest here. Uh, I think it's uh, justice to say it's a face of NetFever in the community. The great Carl Kessler actually joined us. And if you watched the uh, YouTube video he did with the SAP developers on the uh, history of ABAP, um, you know that this guy is long around in the area of ABAP to actually know who created it. So, <laughs> please welcome uh, Karl Kessler. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tobias. Hi, Hi folks. Hi, Great Karl. Yeah. Great Hi, to see Karl. you. So this is now just going to be a, a small small talk session, uh, not really official or something. It's just uh, talking and having a great time. So, Karl, um, tell us a little bit about the what you are doing, what you're missing due to to Corona or history of ABAP or some nice uh, history storytelling. Okay, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, I, I miss a lot due to Corona. I miss meeting you guys and we um, yeah, meet in person uh, quite a lot. But uh, let me tell you first, I think it's a great initiative that you started. So it's really fantastic, the ABAP conference. 
I'm really jealous <laughs> that you took the <laughs> initiative. Uh, that's that's fantastic. That's super. Uh, I watched a couple of sessions, not every session, I'm sorry, but I spent some time today, uh, both on the SAP side of the house, but also on the community side of the house. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> saw the sessions from Martin Koch and Uwe Fetzer this afternoon. Great insights. I learned a lot Yeah, uh, with CDS. I was not in the details of all of those uh, uh, um, details, doing nice formatting, nice reporting, doing all of these annotation stuff, and then great show from Uwe uh, doing messaging with workflow and what have you. So that's uh, really, I mean, uh, checking that the beer is empty and everything. That uh, that was really fantastic. I hope you also enjoyed the SAP uh, sessions. Uh, of course, I mean, you had uh, Boris and Frank and, and Thomas and this afternoon also Sören and Marco was uh, Marcus was also uh, present uh, with topics. So um, let me just uh, reiterate: that's a fantastic idea, and uh, it shows there is a big community out there uh, around ABAP. Uh, I saw more than thousand people joining, uh, um, and um, terrific, really good. And we we also got the message that we need to think of new ways. I hope. I really hope for next year, that's also a the Corona story, that next year will be the, after two years of virtual, I hope next year will be the conference of hybrid uh, um, deployment, <laughs> so to speak. That means that we have on-site presence as far as Corona allows us to do so, but then uh, try to virtually extend because over the last two years, we learned a lot in terms of we can engage uh, quite in a, in a very intense fashion. And uh, let's be very honest, I've never been so close in touch with you, with others, uh, when we did developer days, et cetera, with customers, really sharing screens much more than we did before. Because we were uh, virtually connected, we could then help the one or other much closer. Uh, so we could really collaborate much closer compared to the physical days. And now we need to bring the two things together, I would say. And uh, that's, uh, that's a tremendous... Uh, um, evolution. It's a lot of uh, digitization that we learned during Corona in many different facets. And I think uh, the way how we, for example, we had just uh, last week, we had an education session with sub education, and they also go now this approach with, with breakout rooms, with doing on a very close uh, support, with doing a lot of practice sessions. At, um, virtualization has shown us how important it is to really go into the code, to see how things are working, to share best practices, to do into the tools. Not uh, Roadmap is great. And I mean, I've done so many roadmaps over, over the last 30 years. Uh, roadmap is always important to get an orientation. Yeah? Um, and I think Boris had a lot to tell about where we are heading to and how we want to innovate, uh, how, how we want to uh, innovate also our concepts of extensibility. That's very important. And, uh, but it's so important also to share the best practices, to, to look into the code, to see what is good code, what is bad code, um, to learn from each other. And we try to do a lot in terms of, uh, you know, uh, tutorials up and, uh, up and running. So we have done way more compared to earlier times, I would say in that respect, but nothing is so valuable than experts talking to experts, sharing ideas, sharing uh, uh, hacker know-how, so to speak. So that's, that's fantastic. So um, congratulations to this uh, great, uh, um, uh, yeah, to this great initiative. I just, uh, all, I only can say. Thank you very much. Just providing a platform. It, it would be nothing actually without the people attending or taking the time to, to share and to present. And uh, I have to say, because uh, uh, yes, uh, we were just talking about this with uh, Gobal Bogdan, uh, uh, Marcos, and now also is here, Mark Bernard is also here. Uh, what's really interesting about this kind of virtual events is that everybody actually can come together virtually, no travel required. So you just enter wherever you are. Uh, it takes a lot of, of time away uh, to get there and sharing your, your desktop, what you're doing actually is also way easier than, than before. Uh, what people are sharing right now, our, our, our presenters on code, this is just amazing. And they don't have to take care about taking their laptop and set it up somewhere else. It's, it's already their productive environment. Yeah. And this really is, is 
I have to say, impressive. So we are actually uh, blown away by the numbers that we that we have. We have now uh, more than one thousand six hundred registrations, wow. and a registration is optional. <laughs> Just to say, I, I'm not sure if everybody got the message, but it's optional. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's live streaming for free. Yeah, it's, it's, one, it's, it's amazing. We are really blown away. We had a one workshop. Uh, it took 40 minutes to actually actually get all the 50 slots uh, sold out. So we had to release uh, uh, 50 more, more uh, slots. So then now there are like 80 people attending the workshop. So this is uh, normally what, what you know from Google events yeah, or from Apple events where space is filled out in, in seconds. Uh, amazing. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it, I, I believe it shows really that ABAP uh, serves to, to, to get people together worldwide, that it's a global language. And it really is uh, impacting uh, more or less the, the life of millions of billions of people on a daily basis. So this is, I'm, I'm, I'm super surprised. What, what, I, what I can also add from, from my side here, that for example, compared to SAP TechEd, this conference is much more developer oriented yeah one so mm -hmm. this is also uh, to me uh, uh, something uh, that brings uh, new new value yeah of course we need such huge events like sub the as well yeah because that's uh, more still by by sap itself but that that is really a great idea yeah to have something yeah. which is let's say uh, when the developer could uh, better plan uh, the attendance of for the sessions that are strictly development oriented ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we have to say that it's also a, a unique setup actually. We have people from SAP and now, now Carl is joining. I said before, it's a phase of a net fever to the community because it's uh, incredible what Carl actually did over the last 10, 15 years. Uh, is it, is it uh, long? It's longer than 15 years, right? <laughs> As, as the face of, of How the long are we are doing ABAP? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you go to some event somewhere in the world before COVID, Carl was there actually, and he was presenting like, yeah, that's what we are going to do is this net fever. That is our, our strategy. That is what, what you get. I mean, to me, actually, Carl is net fever. Old school. Yeah, and then you see actually uh, guys like uh, Boris Gebhardt or Frank Jens joining also. We, we have uh, Thomas uh, Fiedler from ATT. We have uh, Andre Fischer, the uh, gateway uh, half god <laughs> grandmaster. <laughs> and at the same time, you under and they get the big names of big names actually from, from SAP. You also get, for instance, people like Lars on the same conference, or now we have here Mike, for instance, one of the masterminds of ABAPGIT. Uh, I mean, this is a, a, a mixture, yeah? This is, uh, I'm, I'm totally uh, flashed, to, to be honest, that we were actually capable of getting these people to join this event. And we have from customers, from partners, as you see here, Gobal is, is from, a, from a customer, we have Bogdan from a partner. It's incredible. <laughs> we, will, we will definitely copy some of the characteristics. <laughs> of the uh, maybe not use all and everything. No, no. But uh, um, especially opening up, that's so important. Yeah? And uh, keep the developer focus. I think the event that uh, we also focused pretty much on developer profile was this developer days in May, typically happening in our famous uh, schooling environment over there, education environment. But it's too small. No? It's it's just 30, 30 guys, two or three days, and uh, there are so many that would like to attend, that would like to uh, would like to follow the conversations and uh, do uh, co-chairing and what have you. Um, so definitely, um, we all, we also saw it a ticket. It was fun. We had a workshop with analytics or up as the basis, and then some SAC SAP analytics cloud on top. Over 900 people joined that hands-on session. Yeah, the, it was opened, I think, by the steering committee. We, we weren't aware of that fact. Andre Fischer had a hard time because all of a sudden he understood, okay, now I'm on, on, on air with 900 people. No, <laughs> but he did a great job. And, uh, and uh, that shows there's tremendous interest. We have to really invite the people. And now with virtual, it's, it's much easier to get them all uh, on board it more or less quickly and, and uh, definitely yeah so that's uh, um, that's so important and and I think I mean Abba, we have done a couple of history sessions also internally at SAP not only the one that we had on YouTube but even 
uh, down to our, our two times. And it's always the same idea. It's about building frameworks, about building an interpreter, or runtime environment, compiler, what have you, tools, capable uh, utilities, frameworks, etc. And then the people start to do something creative with it. And as, as always, the frameworks are not complete and some certain things that we have breaks in between, uh, but that starts the discussion. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, I think, now, that this is the recurring theme of ABAP. So if I compare the old ABAP 30 years ago with, uh, with today's RAP ABAP, and it's a big difference. Yeah? But the idea, the, 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 the philosophy is, is still there. You have uh, business processes and you have master data and you have workflows and you have events. Uh, so that, uh, that was also present 30 years ago. So it's not so different in that respect, but the tools have changed and um, I think uh, that is what those developer conferences are all about. So um, yeah, definitely let's um, make even more out of it coming next year. I think, uh, and one important aspect, uh, I think someone uh, of you mentioned it before. I know I, it was in the, in the it was uh, Uwe and, and colleagues in the meet the speaker session. So many new capabilities, no, so many new innovations have happened in the meantime. That's the important thing. If innovation, uh, is stopping, then the whole, then ABAP is dead. Yeah? But uh, if innovations are coming across and new innovations are delivered in a continuous way, then ABAP is very alive. And that's, uh, that's exactly the, the equation, I would say. That means um, the more we push, the more we bring, and sometimes we flood you with stuff, but the more uh, you can react and respond and then go your own ways and do cool stuff in the community and compete with us. I know you're competing uh, in the tools area, in, in the open source area, what have you. Uh, we're not always uh, at the front. Um, you can challenge us. And I think that makes this lively interaction with you and with the team here, with the other platform team. By the way, I'm not... Uh, Paid by NetFever, NetFever's maintenance. I'm really paid by Harald and team. So I'm, also, I'm also part of the ABAP team. Yeah. But, but you, you should be very careful when you say, hey, give us some ideas on how to improve the IDE or something like that, because then people will go to, we need it in SE80 or Visual Studio Code. And then again, I have to, to have to pay a beer for Thomas. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, well, no, it's it's uh, great to have you here. Uh, some nice insights. So let's let's uh, see what SAP is going to steal. Our comments to SAP edition. It's it's like in in other, but we are now we'll the, keep the you standard. posted. We we'll keep you posted. Uh, and, and SAP is doing their own uh, set copy of the standard. Above <laughs> comments. Sub-up-com. sub, -up sub -up exactly. <laughs> well, we, we will see. We are, we are open to everything. Yeah. Okay, we have my oh, one, two minutes um, on channel one. Uh, any, anybody here still has questions to Carl? Everybody is shy. That's perfect. 